Hi, I'm Donna from Art Craft Crazy and today I'm going to show you my new digital set that I have in my shop. It's a beautiful marriage certificate vintage envelope set and I don't always charge for my patterns because I know we all love a freebie. And you will still see lots of freebies from me because I love sharing my ideas with you all. I have a secure site with an SSL certificate on board. If you're always on the lookout for ephemera, this is perfect for you. I have got several different ways that this envelope can be used. I'm supplying it in a JPEG. Um, it's available on my website, so all you need to do is go to the links that are below this video and download it from my website. Now, when you print this out, this one here is a JPEG that you print out on white paper. Now, I suggest that you set your printer to a higher quality so you get this nice vintage look and then all you have to do is cut it out. I've got one here cut out and I'll make this one up in a minute but you can see the difference if you print this out on good paper as well. This is a 100 GSM. It is a printer paper that but it is just a little bit better than your normal reflex paper. So this is your normal reflex paper, 80 GSM. And this is the 100 GSM, which is just a little bit better quality and it only costs one or two dollars more per hundred sheets. So this one is the better one to use and you get a better color. There's a big difference. So we'll make this one up in a minute. There's another sheet that has two smaller envelopes and what we'll be doing with this is making something like this. I'll show you how I made this. It's a tag. So that makes up into a very cute mini envelope. You can also print it out on tea stain paper. What I've done with this one is it hasn't got all the markings of the vintage envelope. I've just made the outline of the envelope and put a hand-drawn scroll on that and the certificate of marriage text so that you've got an option to put this on whatever type of paper that you've got. This is just your normal everyday copy paper and I've tea dyed it first and then printed it. So I'll put this through my printer after I've tea dyed it. Okay. <laughs> and this one here is another um, variation of the envelope. I've just got the shape of the envelope and it has a watercolor, a very faint watercolor. You see that there and some lovely roses on it. So that just gives you another variation and this one looks lovely as well. And that is also printed directly onto tea dyed or tea stained paper, just your everyday uh, cheaper variety of copy paper. This one here is just the outline with no text on it whatsoever. Uh, you could also print that on your tea dyed paper so it would look just the outline like that with no text or the scroll so it's just like that so you can cut that outline out and just make that up into your envelope and there it goes again um, this time it's got a double-sided paper in a marble and I just done a little bit of practice there to see what it would look like with a um, distress ink stained edge. So there's lots of options on what you can do with this. I've even done one using um, a tip that Nick the Booksmith gave us. I'll show you this. It's a, the painter's uh, masking paper. She done this video a few weeks back 
and um, we were lucky enough to be able to get this in Australia so one of the things I didn't have to buy online I could get quite easily from Bunnings in Australia so I just cut this into an A4 size you could cut it down to a letter size an A4 size or whatever size you need I cut it down to A4 size and just put that into my printer and printed it out and then stained the edges with my uh, distress ink and that turned out pretty good too so I've just got an uh, envelope to use in my junk journal now I'll show you this one I got this one here and I printed it out on just white paper that one turns out lovely you get a little bit of the color on the back as well depending on what you use it for you could use the one in white so if you were going to a wedding it's not just for junk journals you could put uh, the gift a lot of brides like have a wishing well so you could put your gift of money in that and put that in the wishing well I think that would make a nice gift I've also included a um, a couple of different sizes this is an 8 by 8 sheet so I've got one 8 by 8 sheet and one a 6 by 6 and so if you've got plenty of these paper stacks I've got quite a few of these so I've got 8 by 8s and 6 by 6 so you just set your printer up I've got a, a little clip I'll put at the end of this once I've made up this envelope here I'll put the clip at the end on how you go about printing straight on to your 8x8 sheet or your 6x6 sheet this is pretty handy so this was a, a wedding stack so I thought that would look pretty good as well now I did make up one but silly me I put my paper in upside down so when I turn it around that way it's right but that way it was upside down so this time I've done it correctly so I put the paper in that way and I should have put it in that way so it's worked out well this time so I'll show you um, after I make up this envelope uh, how to print this out now just to save time I went ahead and cut this out so once it's cut out just make sure you cut away all of the the um, if you're using this one make sure you cut away all of the black lines so cut just inside so that you don't see any of those black lines this one's not so bad you just don't want to leave any of the white paper so just cut right on the edge once that's cut out just turn it over and I use my scraper for my scan and cut and I just make a sharp line there you can use your scoreboard or you can just freehand it and just fold that larger piece over first my little brand mark will uh, disappear once we've folded the next piece over and I'm just lining up my ruler straight down that line there it's really easy to make it takes no time at all that's the second fold and we'll fold the end of the flap I'll put some glue under here now I don't put the glue right at the top here because it needs to come down a bit lower so keep away from the top and just come up here and the same with there put a little bit of glue there I'm keeping away from the bottom as well uh, from the fold line actually there fold that over press it down the same with that and there's your envelope made to finish it off I'll just do that last fold line on the flap and that's perfect for your junk journal 
Now, um, there are some of the the stain lines on it or the aged marks on it naturally, uh, and that comes out in the printout. Uh, you can get your distress inks and finish that up some more, which we will do. Now you can use a colour that you like to use. You can use the, the tea stained or the um, vintage photo I'm using here. And I'm just doing a hit and miss. Now I'm not going to load up any more ink on here and I'm just going to pat it to give it a bit more colour. And that'll be random and it'll give it a, a little bit more extra spots and dots. And then because it's got hardly any ink on it now, and you only do this if you know you haven't got a lot of ink, otherwise you could get some marks on there that you don't want and you'll overdo it. And there's your vintage envelope. Now if you want it to look even older, you could start creasing up a few corners and you know give it that aged look a bit because the original was pretty beat up around the edges here so you just squish it up a little bit just so it didn't look so because that's where it got the most use was on these edges so if you didn't want it to look so fresh just uh, mess it up a little bit so that's how quick and easy that one is. Once you've printed it out, it is very, very easy to make up. So we'll get this one out now and we'll put together the tag. Um, it'll be a little bit different to this because this one here, I've I done this one in the wedding theme. Now, I've only got one pair of these little gloves. But if you've got something like that, it finishes up pretty good. So we'll do something similar. So I've just got a plain uh, manila tag and I got the paper from my six by six, the paper from my six by six sheet. And all I've done is glue that on there and then just cut around the edge. I printed out the envelopes with two on the sheet and just cut them out and made it up and inked the edges. And I glued down both tabs on that just so that it was um, sitting nice and flat. And you can put as much color on, on there as you like. I brought the color into the center a bit more. You can have it sitting on there straight or you can have it on an angle. You can trim the corners like I did on this one or you can leave it plain. And glue that down. I'm going to glue the whole thing down and I might put it on a bit of an angle again. I sort of liked it before on the angle on that one. Now with the trim you can just use some lace and you can get your lace and scrunch it up there like that. If you think that's a bit white it just depends on whether you want if you're going for a white look. If you were going for a white look, you could use something along the lines of this. I've got some white lace here. I've got this white lace here. I've got the butterflies and the light pink. So depending on, you know, which way you're looking to go, um, what I'm going to do with this one is go more the vintage look and keep it more tea dyed. So we will use more this one. I've got some little bits and bobs here. So I might use this. I'm not sure yet exactly how I'm going to put it. Maybe similar. I've got these tiny little roses. 
Now they're tiny, they keep flipping out on me actually. If I pop them there. Um, what I, how I used the, how, how I got these was these were um, in my mum's things and they were like roses on a bow. So I just pulled the little grub roses off the bow. They come off really easy. Before I do that, I might thread my ribbon through because once I start gluing everything down on there, I won't be able to get to that. So I'll put that there first. So these little envelopes are just not, you know, you're not restricted to just be using them as an envelope. You can use them as, you know, little decorations uh, for your ephemera. I'm wondering if I might, might cut that and try and get it to go into a bit of a gathering way for me. The good thing about um, gluing your, all your things down is that, you know, you can just build it up. So that's how I wanted it to sort of be like that, is to sit up a little bit. Maybe the fabric glue might be a bit better. I can get it to hold a bit quicker. Yeah, that's not holding quick enough for my liking. I'll swap glues. So I'll just use the fabric glue now, I think. Okay. Let's make this work. Lucky I'm going to be covering this up. That's about how I want it anyway. Put some more of the fabric tack on there to put my leaves down. I'm going to cross them over because I don't want them hanging out way too far off the edge because they'll break. They're not that strong. Oh gosh, she's coming out fast. Okay, now, tell you, this fabric glue is so good. Not upside down, thank you. In we go. Now all that's left to do is either put something like that on there. I just kept to the sequins and the little pearls. So I'm using the glitter glue and I'm going to stick with going across the top of the envelope and the tag with this. And I do have a rule that I use that I put what I call the big rocks. I always put the big rocks down first. So if I'm going to build something, I'll put the biggest items down first and then put the smaller ones around it. So I start off by putting the sequins down first and then these pearls, if I can keep it in my hand, I get these pearls up and I'll put the, because they've got holes in them, because I use them for jewellery making, I'm going to put the pearls off to the side. I think this bit needs a bit more glue, so I'll, um, this glue dries clear, so it's really good for this sort of work. So I'm going to have the holes of the pearl off to the side, and it just makes it look a lot better. So I'll just go ahead and I'll use the, there's another rule, the groups of three or five or seven always works well. And it random, 
I am always pretty random as well. It's hard to know where you're going to put things until you start putting them down. So I'm just filling in the gaps here now. The tweezers are good for this sort of work. It's not unusual for me to go back later. Maybe tomorrow I'll look at it again and add some more. So I'll just keep going. I'm sort of following the leaves across. This glue dries pretty quick too. It's good. It's really good. So that's pretty much done. It doesn't need a lot more. I'll just let it sit there to dry. I'll try again to see where I can put this little sentiment, but it just didn't work. This one here is good too, because when I made this tiny little envelope, I just got a plain tag. And this is a corner of a gift, tag, a gift envelope that was on a bunch of flowers I got when my son was born. So I just ripped off the corner. And I'm going to glue that onto the tag. I just used the Vintage Photo Distress Ink on the edge. And I bought some of the colour toward the centre. I got my... Uh, I, I used a script stamp in a lighter colour. And stamped that down across the bottom. And I'll tuck that in to the corner of the tag. And I'll glue that into one of the journal pages. Did you know that you can print an 8x8 paper stack straight into your printer? To set up, I'll, I'll show you how you set up your printer to do this. Open up the JPEG that I've made available for you. Once you've opened up the JPEG, it, it'll look like this on your computer and open up your print menu. Now, once you've selected your printer, uh, you'll need to look for your paper size. Now, if you can't locate anything that says custom, you won't be able to organize what it, your 8x8 paper size from here. So I'll show you another way that you can do it. So close down out of here, so cancel, and right mouse click just on your JPEG here on your window. This only works for Windows, I don't have a Mac. So see, when you right mouse click on your computer, you can see open with. The, a menu will drop down and you see open with. So click on open with, and we're going to open with paint. Now, all Windows computers have paint. So select paint and click OK. Now, up in the top left hand, right up in the top left hand corner, select your file, then scroll down to print and select print. Select preferences because we're going to change the settings in preferences. Now see your document size here, you're either on A4 or letter. Scroll all the way down to user defined or custom. And see here, change it to inch and then eight for your width and eight for your height. You can change it if you've got a six by six, change it to six but we're going to use the 8 by 8 and it's inches and click OK. Now, if you want a really good quality print, you need to change it to high. So get off the standard print and change it to high and leave it on color and click OK. Now click print here and it'll open up the next 
drop down box and click print again and it'll go ahead and print for you. Now that's how easy it is to set up your printer to be able to print your 8x8 paper stacks. Now I know you'll get a lot of use out of this envelope. It's a great versatile pattern. Uh, you can use it for so many things. You can print it out in so many different sizes and use it to make ephemera, use it to make, you know, to, to make little tags out of. And, you know, like I, I, couldn't, I could have kept going. I could have showed you lots more ideas. Um, I've used a lot, I've stopped short on a few things just so that you can get your own ideas going and I'm sure you will. Please leave me some of your ideas in the comments on how you would use these envelopes. I'd love to know how you would use them. I'm Donna from Artcraft Crazy. Thanks for watching and bye for now. I just need you, I don't know what it is you do I just want you, I just need you I don't know what it is you do I just wanna love you, I just wanna hold you Just wanna be with you till we grow old